All right, everybody. Welcome back to the flip class. Today we're gonna be t we're gonna be learning about let's see here tabletop drumming. Okay, I'm gonna teach you how to drum with your hands on your kitchen table. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Oh, hold on. There was a I spilled a little coffee on my paper here. No. T oh, sorry. It looked like tabletop drumming. Actually, today we're gonna learn uh, uh, math. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the flip class. Today we're going to talk about adding, subtracting, and also estimating adding and subtracting of fractions. I'm going to do some examples. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly because we're going to talk about these in class and be able to work out some examples, but I want you to see them and also to have them to reflect back on if you need to uh, check the video while you're doing your work. So let's get started. Okay, when we're adding or subtracting fractions, if you look at this addition problem, 1 eighth plus 1 eighth. The denominators are the same. So if the denominators are the same, the denominator stays the same. I don't add 8 plus 8, it just, the denominator just stays 8. I only have to add the numerators if the denominators are the same. 1 plus 1 is 2, I get 2 eighths. If I was going to put that in simplest form, that would of course be 1 fourth. Those are equivalent. Okay, subtraction. Same thing, 3 fifths minus 2 fifths. Uh, the denominator for both is fifths, so the denominator stays the same. They are like fractions. The denominator is the same, is the same, so it stays the same. It stays fifths. Three minus two gives me one. That's in simplest form. That's my answer. One fifth. Okay. In this case, I have a whole number uh, minus a fraction. We know if we have a whole number that we can convert that into a fraction. A fraction would just have the numerator and denominator. Uh, being the same. We know what our denominator is going to be because of the denominator of the uh, uh, fraction that we're going to be subtracting. So really we could look at this as three-thirds, which is the same as one whole, minus two-thirds. Both of the denominators are thirds, so my answer is going to have a third as the denominator. Three minus two gives me one. It's in simplest form. One-third, we're good to go. Okay, now I've got a couple of mixed numbers. We're going to subtract the mixed numbers. When you look at uh, 3 and 6 twelfths minus 1 and 3 twelfths, the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the fractions. Okay, both have the same denominator, so we're going to subtract the numerators. 6 minus 3 gives us 3. The denominator is 12, it stays the same. And then we look at the whole numbers. 3 minus 1 gives us 2. 2 and 3 twelfths. Now you might look at 3 twelfths and say, well, Mr. Quick, 3 and 12 are both divisible by 3. You're right, so we need to simplify, in which case 3 twelfths would simplify. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 12 four times. My whole number stays the same. So 2 and 3 twelfths would give us 2 and 1 fourth in simplest form. Okay, solve for x. x equals 3 eighths. So I have, down here I have 7 eighths plus x. I know that, uh, I'm going to erase the x and put 3 eighths in its place. The denominator is the same, is the same so it stays the same. And I end up with uh, something over 8, something eighths. 3, or excuse me, 7 plus 3 gives us 10. Whoa, Mr. Quick, shouldn't the numerator be smaller than the denominator? It can be, okay? This is an improper fraction. We know that 8 goes into 10 one time. There'd be 2 left over. The denominator stays the same. So I know that that improper fraction, if I converted it, would be 1 and 2 eighths. And then if I simplified that, 2 eighths is the same as 1 fourth. My whole number stays the same. I'd end up with 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, estimation. There are certain fractions. For example, 1 fifth. That's closer to zero than it is to half or, in, or until it is to one, right? Now if I had, um, for example, two eleventh, that's also closer to zero than it is to uh, one half or one whole, okay? Uh, two fifteenths, that would all go in that close to zero. They're closer to zero than they are to a half or they are to a whole. If you look at five elevenths, 5 is almost half of 11. It's not exactly, that's why we're talking about estimation, but it would go in that same area. 
four sevenths, of course, right? Nine twentieths, okay? Those are all closer to one half than they are to zero, and they're closer to one half than they are to one whole. So fractions like that would go in the same area. Uh, fractions that are similar or close to one whole, if you have nine out of ten, you have nine tenths, that's almost one whole. If you have, uh, for another example, 16 nineteenths, that's much closer to one uh, whole than it is to zero or one half, or even uh, six sevenths. You know, if you have seven pieces of candy and you eat one and you have six sevenths left, you almost have, you know, one whole pack of candy. You don't, you have almost the entire thing. Okay, so that's one way to look at uh, estimation is basically rounding whether it's closer to zero, closer to half, or closer to a whole. Okay, let's check this out. Uh, estimating, and notice that it does tell us to estimate, eight ninths plus two elevenths. Well, I know eight ninths, that's pretty close to one whole. Okay. If I had a pizza that was cut into nine slices and there was one slice eaten, I have eight out of the nine slices remaining. That's still pretty close to one whole pizza. Two elevenths, pretty much zero. Okay? Now, it's not exactly zero, but we're estimating. It doesn't have to be exact. So one plus zero is, of course, one. I know that eight ninths plus two eleventh is about one. Okay? Estimating. Two mixed numbers. 10 and 3 tenths plus 9 and 3 fourths. Okay. 3 tenths. 10 and 3 tenths plus 9 and 3 fourths. Okay. Uh, 3 tenths is pretty close. I would say 1 half. Okay. 10 would obviously stay the same. Plus 9 and 3 fourths. Well, 3 fourths, here's the catch. I'm going to erase that because 3 fourths is close to 1. And then if I have 9 as my whole number and 3 fourths is close to 1, which is the whole number, I've got to combine those together. I end up with 10 and a half plus 10, which you know, 10 and a half and, and no fraction, just a whole number, no fraction here. 10 plus 10 is 20. My fraction remains 1 half. Okay, we're going to talk more about these. I know this was very quick. We're going to spend more time on them in class together, but I just wanted you to have a couple of examples that you can look at and go through fairly quickly, and we'll go a little bit more in-depth when I see you in class next time. Can't wait.